This right here is the Atlavox S4 Solar Mesh Tastic node. So I've had this prototype up here for about three weeks and it's been running completely self-sufficient this entire time. We've had 90 degree days and uh, cloudy and rainy days. So this is intended to set up in a strategic location. It's self-sufficient, it'll run 24 seven and it will hop messages between other local Meshtastic nodes to relay text messages and other data without needing cell coverage or internet. Now, this is just a prototype, but I do have uh, a small number available for sale now. I'm gonna go over uh, kind of the differences. There's one major difference between the prototype and the production model that I think you're gonna find pretty interesting, but let's jump uh, into my office here and I'll kind of show you all the details of the Atlavox S4. So I have four boxes just like this. Um, these are how they arrive to me. They require a bunch of assembly. Uh, I'm gonna do a full assembly video uh, later on, but here's kind of my workstation where I assemble them. I've got a whole checklist on putting them together. Bunch of different parts here, starting to get organized with this, but I've got a small stack prepared, ready to ship out. So if you purchase one, this is what it's gonna look like when it arrives. So it starts out in this kind of blank box like this, but I 3D printed this custom stamp so I can get some nice custom branding. I love how grungy it looks. It kind of uh, stamps some of that negative space there. So really excited about how the branding came out. All right, so let's open up the box. This is how it arrives. This includes everything you need to get this thing up and running batteries, whiz block, um, it, it comes partially charged just due to some shipping restrictions, so it can't arrive fully charged, but you could totally deploy this um, right out of the box and it'll be good to go. So I'll plug in the antenna, or I should say screw in the antenna. This antenna is awesome. I've sent this out to a number of uh, people in the community. They've tested the SWR. It comes in at, at below 1.5. Um, so really, really good performing antenna. I also have these for sale individually if you just want these for like a handheld or something like that. So you screw in the antenna, you hit the power switch right here, the battery comes on, and then with the yellow light means it is now supplying power to the whiz block inside. So this is a solar panel, so four watt solar panel integrated right into the enclosure. So that was one of the big things I really liked about this uh, because it's kind of all self-contained into one um, enclosure, one object. You know, the antenna is mounted to it. You don't have to like mount an antenna separately. Uh, it's all just kind of self-contained. Now the mount is right here. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not super thrilled with this mount. So, so there is a reason why I don't have to charge 200 something dollars for this, like a lot of the other solar mesh-tastic nodes you see on like Etsy or something like that. And that's because this is kind of like a retrofit product. So if we take a look at one of these, um, how I receive them, this is actually a solar power bank. So it's intended to power like hunting cameras, security cameras, things like that. But I contacted the manufacturer uh, I've been working with them for like three months and they've actually customized this for me so I can um, alter it to work as a Meshtastic solar node. So the benefit is I didn't have to pay thousands of dollars to have a custom injection molded uh, product designed and manufactured. I'm using an, an existing product and repurposing it. Now there are some drawbacks with that. One of them being the mount kind of sucks. I especially don't like the base. It's just like really small um, and it just kind of seems like it could be a little bit bigger. And I know a lot of people like to mount stuff like this to a pole and this isn't compatible with that. But on the flip side, the thing that's nice is it is detachable. So it has this nice pocket here and what I'm planning on doing if there's you know enough demand for it, uh, I'm gonna custom design uh, a, a mount that can interface with this. I'll probably leave this base plate here and just unscrew this arm and um, design a pole mount for it as well. But to be fair, it is nice having something where this can just be mounted to anything, you know, any flat surface, a tree, something like that. You do get screws in the box as well. So um, you really have everything you need 
to deploy this wherever you want. And of course, this is adjustable, so you can change the angle so the panel is pointing towards the sun um, at like an optimal angle. And you know, that doesn't matter if you have this mounted to a horizontal surface or a vertical surface. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is I located the SMA connector specifically on the side here. So no matter what angle the panel is at, you can orient the antenna um, to be vertical. So it has the best uh, orientation for the antenna. Now I'm gonna go into the specifics of the S4 in a second, but just to wrap up what's in the box, I did have a little manual printed out. Um, there is gonna be, I think, one change to what's written in here. Um, so I'll, t I'll tell you about that in a little bit, but kind of gives you a good quick setup um, getting started guide. Uh, I'm gonna put together a more detailed guide at this QR code right here. This isn't, this isn't live yet. I also have the QR code in the manual as well. And you'll also get your USB-C cable in here as well. That's the one that comes with the whiz block. So speaking of USB cable, you have a waterproof USB-C connector right here. So this is gonna allow you to charge the device uh, through USB if you wanna do that uh, before deploying it. You can also connect this to your computer uh, using the serial interface. You can do firmware updates. Now part of my assembly process is I'm personally flashing the latest MeshTastic firmware on every single one of these before it goes out the door and setting a few um, configurations to optimize this for a solar node. Now you can always customize uh, and change settings yourself. Uh, MeshTastic is free, open source. You can change settings from your phone. This does have Bluetooth built in, so you can do that from your phone or you can use the serial in, uh, interface to do that from your computer, so either way. All right, let me go ahead and open this up and I'll show you how it's set up inside. So there are eight screws um, around the perimeter, Phillips head. This, again, this comes all assembled, ready to go. The whiz block's installed, the batteries are installed. All you have to do is put the antenna on and turn it on, and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put some bubble wrap down here just to protect the panel. All right, so under the cover here, let me just disconnect the SMA cable. It's kind of a short cable, partly to because I just felt like it would be less interference, but also because there's room for two additional uh, batteries in here. So all of these are gonna ship with two 18650 batteries. Each of them have 3000 milliamp hours. So 6000 milliamp hour total capacity, which is more than enough for the uh, whiz block. So whiz blocks are extremely power efficient as is. Um, with both of these batteries, you'll have, even if there's zero sun for over a week, you'll be totally fine. Um, now you'll notice I have an additional circuit board here. So this is actually the charge controller that came in the original product, but I had them customize this. So first of all, I had the, uh, the output change. Uh, by default, it was like six volts. I changed it to 3.7, which is what is required. Uh, by the whiz block. I've got a custom power cable that goes down through this channel right here and then comes up and plugs into the battery terminal. The reason I use the battery terminal and not the solar terminal is so you can still charge this with USB um, without you know having to open this up. You've got your Bluetooth antenna built in here as well so you can service this with your cell phone. And I had them add a rubber gasket around the entire perimeter. This grommet right here is going to arrive uh, plugged. This was where they had a cable going out to plug into like a security camera or something. But you could potentially use this if you wanted to do power over ethernet um, or something like that. You could uh, remove this grommet and use that as an access port to the inside. So the cover here, I have to drill these two holes here. So I have a jig, here's my jig right here that I use to drill those holes. Uh, this is a waterproof connector and the SMA is a waterproof connector as well. So this is totally waterproof. I don't have it, you know, like IP rated or anything like that, but I've had it out in several rainstorms. It's been totally fine. And the other thing um, that I'll note about this charge controller is it's not gonna charge the batteries up to 100%. So that really kills the life of a battery 
especially when it's in high temperatures. So you'll notice that you'll pretty much consistently be around 90 to 95 percent at your at your top. The prototype that I showed you outside actually only has one battery in it. So um, it's been performing flawlessly for about three weeks now, but every one that I'm going to ship out is going to have two batteries and you have the ability to add two more for a total of four. Um, so just phenomenal capacity for the batteries. So these are the stats for the prototype that I had out there. You can see the lowest I got, um, and this is this just shows kind of over the last week, I guess, uh, was like 89%. So um, it keeps it at a nice level between like 90 to 95%. Uh, if you charge batteries all the way up to 100, it just uh, apparently damages the batteries long term. Like it just kind of kills the, the lifespan of the batteries. And by the way, this uh, app is free to download uh, Android and iPhone, and you can customize everything in the S4 just like you can with any other Meshtastic device. But the other thing I wanted to point out about the charge controller that I'm using here is it overcomes the brownout problem. So if you use the built-in charge controller that's on the whiz block, you can have a situation where uh, if you have an extended period of time with no sun or something happens where the solar panel is covered and the batteries drop below a certain level, you can get in a situation where the whiz block will never recover. It can never restart itself because it just doesn't have enough juice to uh, kind of fully come alive. Now, this solves that problem because the charge controller in here has kind of built-in logic where it will detect if the batteries drop below an acceptable level, it'll turn off the output to the whiz block in order to conserve energy and stand by until the charge controller is able to bring the batteries back up to an acceptable level. Once it gets to that point, it'll hit a switch and uh, turn the output back on to the whiz block, restarting it successfully. So it overcomes that brownout problem that you typically read about uh, when people try to do solar enclosures with the whiz block. Now, I was originally considering offering this as a kit without the whiz block. So this has a 19007 baseboard with the uh, 4630, basically the Meshtastic starter kit. Uh, these will all be the US frequency, so 915 megahertz, frequency for the United States. And I was considering uh, offering this as like an empty case. So just kind of selling it as an enclosure. But I don't know how I feel about that because it is, I mean, look at this. It's like this big, long process to get this thing assembled and configured. And I just don't know if that is going to be a good user experience. So I think I'm going to just assemble these myself and offer them for sale as like a whole kit. Now, right now I've got them listed for $129.99. I think that's going to get bumped up a little bit. And right now I've got a hundred of these. So this is all kind of a experiment because I didn't want to take the leap into having a custom enclosure designed and manufactured. I'm kind of testing the waters with this. So I've got a hundred. I don't know if I'm going to order more of this same product and kind of do another batch, but um, that's what I've got right now. So if you want to get one of these, I'll have the link in the description below and you probably see it around the video um, at Lavox.com. That's my Shopify store. And one little discrepancy here, I was originally going to set these all up as uh, routers. So there are a, a number of different roles that you can set a Meshtastic radio to. And there's been a lot of controversy lately over whether or not uh, you really need to use the router roll. Um, unless you're putting this way up on the top of a mountain um, that has a significant uh, line of sight advantage over other uh, local nodes, uh, you're pretty much better off going with client. And client is kind of what's recommended for 90% of Meshtastic radios. So I think I'm going to reconfigure these to be client. And then again, you can always change the configuration yourself. It's really easy to do. So uh, if you want to pick up one of these, I'll have the link in the description below. I'm going to do another video showing you kind of the whole process of putting one of these together. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.